it was on a return flight from a life-changing vacation in Alaska when I decided to become an entrepreneur. I was so moved by the wildlife and natural beauty of Alaska that I wanted to make lots of money so I could help protect beautiful places like this. And my wife and I both became especially passionate about grizzly bears. Yeah, I know, an engineer that's into grizzly bears is kind of unusual, but what can I say? I've got a lot of interest. But being a microchip design engineer for Texas Instruments was the job I'd always dreamed of having since I was a child. And I've always been obsessed with electronics. I loved my job at TI. I was good at my job, and I was passionate about it for about 10 years. But I've also dreamed of being an entrepreneur for most of my life. And honestly, I was tired of spending so much of my life in a tiny office in a big city. I wanted more freedom, more control, and more impact in the world. And I'm going to guess you probably have similar feelings or you probably wouldn't be watching this video. So I began the process of brainstorming different business and product ideas. Then one night, while my wife and I were watching a movie in the dark, we were struggling to see the buttons on the remote control. And that's when my product idea struck me. The idea was a low-cost miniature lighting device that illuminated any surface that it was attached to, including, among many things, remote controls. I named it the Pop-Up Microlight. When you press the top, it would pop up and shine light downward, illuminating the surface that it was attached to. And keep in mind, this was years ago, before illuminated remote controls and smartphones were popular. Next, I began building early prototypes using clay and foam. And within a few months, I had my first 3D printed prototype, which was quite crude and not really functional yet. But before proceeding further with prototyping my product, and spending lots more money, I decided that my strategy was going to be to get a single big company to express interest in my product. I hoped that this would be the product market validation I needed and that it would open up new doors for me. So I decided to make Blockbuster Video my primary target. They seemed ideal for a product that could illuminate remote controls when watching movies in the dark. You do remember Blockbuster Video, right? <laughs> This was back when they were a huge, internationally known company. So, how did I get through to Blockbuster Video? Well, first I just found the email addresses for several of their vice presidents. And then I decided to reach out to their vice president of purchasing because he seemed to have the best title that would be the appropriate person to reach out to. So I sent him a really short email describing my product. And I also attached to this email a sales flyer featuring a picture of my product in use on a remote control. Although at this point, my prototype was still barely functional and was nowhere near ready for market. Well, within a day, he replied. His message was brief, but oh, so blissful for me to hear. He just said, quote, looks interesting. Tell me more. Needless to say, I was absolutely thrilled to have a top executive at a multi-billion dollar retailer tell me my product was interesting. Man, that was a huge jolt of energy. And I'm pretty sure I did some sort of ridiculously looking dance at that point. You do not want to see me dance. A few days later, I was in communication with their head retail buyer over merchandise in all of their thousands of stores. But this communication was painfully slow. I spent the next few months improving my prototype and constantly playing phone tag with the Blockbuster buyer, 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 who was nearly impossible to catch on the phone. In addition to the electrical design, my product also needed considerable mechanical design, which I had no experience with at that time. I tried hiring a few different mechanical engineers to help me, but that didn't go so well. None of them could focus entirely on my project, of course. <laughs> So I kept getting frustrated with how long it was taking them. I was excited and highly motivated, and I wanted things to move fast. Can you relate to ever wanting things to move a little more quickly? Well, after one engineer literally yelled at me, yes, he yelled at me to stop rushing him. He, he told me I was stressing him out. So after that, I decided that I was going to teach myself how to design the enclosure and just finish the design myself. Oh yeah, I also quit my dream job at TI and we did something a little bit crazy. My wife and I moved from Tucson, Arizona 
all the way to Homer, Alaska for a couple of years while I worked on my product and then also was doing remote consulting work for TI. So finally, I secured a meeting with the Blockbuster head buyer at their corporate headquarters in Dallas, Texas. I was thrilled, but oh, I was so terrified too. Going from my relaxing, secluded life in a small Alaskan town to presenting my product to a billion-dollar company was a huge shock to my system. You talk about being forced outside your comfort zone. And their headquarters were located in downtown Dallas, near the top of a very tall skyscraper, making the whole event that more, much more intimidating for me. Honestly, I didn't sleep at all the night before my presentation, and I was sick to my stomach almost the entire trip. Needless to say, I was not operating at my best. Fortunately, I must have done okay, and they were still interested, and the buyer requested that I send him an updated prototype once I had it ready. Well, a few months later, and I finally had a fully functional prototype, although it, it was still 3D printed. Well, I shipped him this latest prototype, and I crossed my fingers. I was so anxious to hear his reaction, and I was confident he would be really impressed. So this buyer received the prototype, and it was time to talk with him on the phone. But his response, let's just say, was not at all what I hoped for. And I remember vividly the chills running down my back when I asked him what he thought of the prototype. And his blunt answer was, quote, I think it's awkward to use. Seriously? What the F beep? I was speechless and completely devastated by that response. I'm not going to lie, I cried that day. In fact, I spent the next day or two wallowing in self-pity. But then I recovered and decided to figure out what had happened. My first reaction was to be defensive and to blame the blockbuster buyer. I thought, maybe he's a moron who doesn't know how to push a button. Or maybe his fingers don't work right. Or maybe he lives in a parallel universe with different laws of physics. But darn it, none of those were the case. So I continued and did some research and got more details from the Blockbuster buyer. I did my own experiments and ultimately I discovered what had happened or where I screwed up. I had sent him a 3D printed prototype made with a type of resin with low heat resistance. And I shipped the prototype to him in the middle of a summer heat wave in Texas. Not my brightest moment. My prototype had warped or just partially melted but it didn't melt in enough to be obvious to the buyer who had never seen the product before. It had melted just enough to make the product really awkward to operate. Well, I worked with this buyer even though I was devastated, and he was, you know, he was actually pretty understanding. He knew it was a prototype and not a production unit. And ultimately, I think it kind of impressed him that I worked through this problem. Um, thankfully, though, he didn't hear all the bad names I had called him just a few days earlier. I was able to work past this to eventually get a letter of intent or just an LOI from Blockbuster. And basically an LOI just says, you know, we're interested and we'd like to test this product in our stores once it's available. Well, this is exactly what I wanted from the start. Although an actual purchase order would have been better, but that wasn't feasible at this early stage because I didn't even have any inventory. I barely had a functional prototype. Unfortunately though, Blockbuster was beginning to die by that point, and it wasn't much longer before they filed for bankruptcy. So I never actually got an order from them, but their letter of intent opened all kinds of doors for me. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch this video next.